Hey guys, and welcome to Port Royal 4, developed by Gaming Minds and published by my good friends over at Calypso. And a big thank you to them for, uh, for sponsoring this first episode in what I, I think is going to be quite a long series. So, what kind of game is Port Royal 4? It is a strategy tycoon game. Uh, it's uh, an economic simulator. And I've got to say, I'm, I, I've been addicted since the moment I picked it up. I love this kind of um, tycoon game. So, what is it all about? It is about, of course, the Caribbean and the, the, the fight between the European nations in the Caribbean in the late 16th, early 17th century. And, of course, pirates. <laughs> so, strap your parrots on, because this is going to be a roller coaster ride. It is, uh, it is all about adventure and trading on the high seas. Um, you, you've got four nations to choose from, four factions, England, France, Spain, and the Netherlands. And each one of them has a campaign. Not only are there the four campaigns to play, but each one of those campaigns can be played as a different leader. And there are four different leaders. So there are actually 16 different campaigns to play. You've got the adventurer, the merchant, the buccaneer, and the pirates. Yeah. So... There's a lot of replay value to this. Now, we're not going to be playing the campaign today. Oh, no. Now, I would like to, to, do, to do a series and play, um, play some of the campaigns. But we're going for where I think the real action is, which is the free game. Now, this is a big game. It's a big 3D world. There are 60 different towns to, uh, to trade with. There are, uh, what, 18 different ship types, which are his uh, historically accurate. We are going to play... Because I want to play this really as much as, as, as possible, focus on the on the trading and economic aspect, and a little bit less on the on the combat side of things. There is um, a turn-based ship combat system, which we will get to at some point. Uh, but because I want to focus on the on the trading, we're going with the Dutch. Now, if I if I wanted to be really heavy into the the combat, then I'd probably go with say England because they get bonuses to uh, to their their military. They get different, they, they get really good ships as well. Uh, but we're going with the Netherlands. They get re reduced construction costs for vessels with less than 20 cannons, which is um, the majority of the trading ships. And then residential areas house more citizens so we can expand our towns faster, which is a nice bonus. And then we are going to choose one of the four leaders. The adventurer um, gets experience of captains uh, faster and, and gets uh, to order vessels from other nations that he's defeated in battle. But he's 20% weaker in boarding fights. Each of these has their own unique um, pros and cons, which really change the play style. I mean, it, these are not minor changes. So for example, the merchant doesn't require a trade license. Now trade licenses start at, uh, what, 10,000 uh, and go up the more trade, and you have to buy a trade license for each town that you trade with. Not having to buy trade licenses when you only start with like a, a hundred thousand gold is a big deal. So big bonus. You've also got the buccaneer who's much more geared towards uh, operating as a privateer and preying on the fleets of other nations. And you've got the pirates. Well, that kind of tells you everything you need to know. We are going to focus on the economics. So we're going with the merchant, and I will of course be Captain Skystorm. And we're going to have a nice blue flag with, and there are different colours that you can choose from. We're going to go with blue, and there's a bunch of icons. I think either the money bags, the pirates kind of cool. Oh, the crown I kind of like. But I, I think we're going to go either the rum bar. I think we're going to go with a rum barrel. Ah, yes, the bloke from the southwest approves. That'll be full of full of rum or apple brandy. Ha ah. ha. Right, so. Um, we will continue. Now, this, if, you, if it wasn't configurable already, now you get loads of configuration. So, uh, this is the Netherlands, the orange, and then the white is England, the red is Spain, and the blue is France. We can decide how big we want our nation to be at the start. So, we can either be small, very small, or we can be, if you want, to, if you want life to be a little bit easier, you can be very large. We're going to play, I think, on regular. Um, you can change the distribution. So you can change where your towns are 
on the map. So, like, if you want to be in the Gulf area, you can be over there, or you can be in the Central Islands, or you can be down here in South America. I'm going to go with Distribution 2. This makes it a little bit harder because the, the trade winds are not particularly favourable uh, in this area. So that'll make life a little bit harder. But I'm then going to compensate and make it a little bit easier for myself by having my hometown close to the, the, um, the Viceroy's town. That's why it's got the little crown of Port Royal. And you'll see why I want to do that later. So... Uh, Santiago is going to be our hometown. We are going to start with the uh, least amount of, of cash, so the hardest. Uh, 100,000 gold and one, one vessel. You can choose, do you want the, the tasks that you're, you're going to be offered to be mostly military or economic? Do you want a mix or do you not want tasks? Well, we're going to go with economic tasks. And then uh, resource distribution, how do you want it? Do you want it just like evenly distributed? Or, well, that's the wrong one. Um, or do you want it just to be completely random, so you might get clusters? Or do you want it to be regional, so, you know, like coffee might grow in one area of the map, wood might grow in another area of the map, stuff like that. Um, and you can have also have regional and random. I don't know how that works. We are going to go, with, I think, with a, just a, an even distribution. Now, this, this determines whether you start off only knowing where your, how, your own towns are or do you, do you know where all the towns on the map are? We are going to have to discover them. I'm going to have to discover towns on. So I will only know where the Dutch towns are. And we'll have to find all of the others. That'll make life a little bit more difficult. And there are three difficulty settings. There's, uh, there's regular. There's difficult. And then there's hardcore. Now there's a big difference between regular and difficult and hardcore. If you play on hardcore... You don't get a lot of the automation features in terms of the trading, which means that it's time to get your Excel spreadsheet out because you're going to be recording lots of prices and like what towns sell what products. And yeah, another time, I think. For this one, I'm just going to play on difficult. Let's start the game. And here we are. And I am just going to take a second to zoom in and show you that this... It's a fairly beautiful game. And we can zoom like pretty close in to the ships and the towns. Now, I'm just going to pause for a bit while I'm uh, kind of having a little look around and setting things up. So this is our hometown of Santiago, colony of the Netherlands. Um, it has 1,647 inhabitants and we will want to grow that over time. Uh, it uh, it can cultivate, um, so this this is either fi farming or mining op options. Uh, we can grow corn, vegetables, meat, and tobacco. Those are the four things. Each um, each town can produce like four different uh, natural sort of natural resources. So Barracoa, for example, gets grain, corn, coal, and cocoa. But they're not limited to producing only their natural resources. Because you can also set up what are called um, kind of trade crafts. So where you're turning one thing into something else. So for example, you could have a brewery here, even though we're not producing grain, which is used to brew beer, you can have a brewery here, and then you could ship grain in, for example, from Barracoa, and brew it over here. So yeah, and each town can have up to seven different products going on. Oh yeah. Right. But that is something that comes slightly later because developing your town is really, really expensive. If I go to the construction menu, we can we can develop this however we see fit. We can put in residential areas. Um, we can add things like chapels and taverns and markets to get bonuses and make people happier. Um, we can put in things like hospitals to stop them, to stop the spread of disease. And we can also put in things like um, the, the church. We can upgrade the church uh, a couple of times to increase the amount of people who can live in the town because at the moment we're limited. Um, the small church allows uh, a town to receive more than 2,000 citizens. And then the large church is um, 4,000. And then finally the cathedral 
gets you up to over a whopping 8,000 people. So these towns really do grow. And then, as well as the, uh, the town, you can develop the businesses. But more about that later, because like for, just for example, just to put in um, a grain farm would cost us 33,000. We only start with 99, and we need to develop our trading network first. So, trading. Our ship, or I should say our convoy, because you need to make a distinction between vessels, ships, individual ships, and convoys, because ships sail in convoys of one or more ships. We are in port in Santiago. Now, I could go into here, and I can manually buy and sell um, from my ship's cargo I can sell or I can buy from the town's, the town's market, the, from the town square. And this filling level here tells you whether a product is uh, rare, not so rare, or abundant. And it's these green bars. So if you've got two bars, then a product is not scarce. The, the price will be reasonable. If you've got four bars, then it's very abundant and it'll be dirt cheap. If you've got no bars, then it's rare and it'll be an expensive product. And depending on whether you're buying or selling, you can take advantage of those prices. Now, this little cog down here tells you that this is uh, something that this town produces. And over here, we've got the production, the daily production and the daily consumption. So you can see down here that we produce, uh, we've got 26 in stock, we produce 16 a day, and we are consuming three a day. Right, so this is going to be something that we can buy here and sell in other places, right? Whereas beer, for example, we are consuming two a day. We're not producing any. So 17 days from now, we're going to run out of beer, and the people will be upset. They're already going to be not happy because um, it's not abundant. And this is uh, is shown in the satisfaction of the inhabitants because the biggest factor that affects their happiness is the supply of commodities. Here you can see we've got an overall happiness level of uh, set or satisfaction level of 79%. The supply of commodities is supplying 86% of that. Right? If you supply commodities, they'll be satisfied. If you don't, they'll get unhappy fairly quickly. Okay, that's all of that. Now, I could, if I wanted to optimize uh, making money in the early days, I could sail around manually and manually trade at ports and I could probably, well I would be able to make more money than using an automated option, but I want to get on with this. So we're going to set up an automated trade route. So let's go to trade routes, create a new trade route. Now when you go into this mode it shows you the wind directions and these wind directions are, are consistent. The, the weather does change, you get storms in these red areas. It's, uh, these red areas means storms can occur. So you want to you want to try and avoid those because your ship's turn will take damage in the storms. Um, but basically, if you're sailing with the wind, you'll be you'll be going nice and fast. If you're sailing against the wind, you'll be going very slow, and you'll also go very slowly when you go through these becalmed areas because there's no wind. So. Setting up um, your initial trade routes, there's a lot of different factors to consider. We want to get money, but I also want to be accruing fame points. Now, these, these are your fame points up here, and there are various ways to get them. This is our Viceroy. Our Viceroy will have, offer us tasks, and if we complete those, then um, we'll get rewards. Uh, if, we, um, uh, if we... Basically, anything positive that you do for your nation will result in fame. Uh, anything negative that you do towards your nation will result in l uh, losing fame. So what we're going to do, if I go to the fame tab, we're going to try and deliver commodities to Port Royal. And Port Royal wants cotton, coffee, tobacco and cocoa. So those are the products that we're going to try and ship here. Now, let's have a look at what, uh, what they produce. Um, okay, they they can produce cotton and in fact are producing cotton. If we try and sell cotton here, we're not going to make much money. In fact, we're probably going to lose money. So we're going to focus on the other three commodities that they don't produce here. So we're going to focus on uh, coffee, cocoa and tobacco, right? And this works kind of well for us because over here in Santiago, now these are randomized, but in Santiago, we can produce 
uh, tobacco, and we can produce tobacco at 110%, which is nice. We get a little bonus on tobacco production here. So we're definitely going to be wanting to, to, to ship stuff down here. So let's set up a, uh, a trade route. And we are going to start off in Santiago, our hometown. We're going to sail down to Port Royal. Then we're going to use the winds to sail up to Trinidad. Then on to Evangelista, which unfortunately takes us through this deadish area, but there's kind of no avoiding that. Then on to Nueva Filipina, then Havana, up to the Grand Bahamas. And here we're kind of sailing against the wind a little bit and then across the wind. And then we want to come down to Nassau, Andros. I think we'll go, oh man over to Cat Island, then we'll come down, oh now, oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's tricky, do I go to, I think probably Crooked Island, now do I skip Puerto Padre, so to go to Puerto Padre, I'm going to have to sail with the wind and then sail against the wind to get back to Barracoa, but I do, I do kind of want to pick up all the towns if I can, I think I might skip that. Going with the wind would be good, but coming back against the wind is going to be slow, and that's going to affect profitability. How quickly you sail around. Time is money. It's, uh, yeah. So I think we'll skip Puerto Padre and just go to Barracoa. All right, on this particular trade route. So now we need to set up our buying and selling rules. Now you can do this as complex or as easy as you like. Now you can do it as easy as just clicking this standard button and it will automatically set everything for you where you buy automatically um, based on the demand in the area, right? It will automatically sell um, where you can get an advantageous price and that's it, that's all you have to do. But if you want, you can change all of these settings you can go into each one of these individually and set it to buy or sell. You can decide, are you going to are you going to sell here? Whatever happens, whatever the price is, I don't care. Just sell it here or buy regardless of the price. Um, you can set limits on what you buy and sell at. You can you can micromanage this as much as you want, or you can just say, nah, you do it for me. And as far as Santiago is concerned, that's what we're going to do initially, and then. Port Royal. Port Royal is going to be slightly different because remember, we've got products that we want to ship here in order to accrue fame. So I'm going to set it to standard, but I'm then going to go down here. Now, cotton, we're not we're not going to be selling cotton here. We'll actually buy cotton here. But the other three products, I want to increase the priority to max for tobacco, coffee, and cocoa. Boom, boom, boom. So our ships will now try and get tobacco, coffee, and cocoa to sell here and they will sell as much as they can here uh, and in fact I can actually say sell everything regardless of even if you're going to make a loss I can say just sell at whatever price it doesn't matter just dump the cargo here should should and I do say should uh, still allow us to make a profit but the main thing is it'll allow us to accrue fame points so that's what I'm going to do there now everywhere else on the on the route I'm just going to set it to standard for now so it's, even with a big route like this, and this is quite a long route, it's very, very easy to set up automated trading. Boom, that's it. I'm going to confirm that. And then now we need a convoy on this route. Now, up here shows us our free convoys, our convoys that are not doing anything. So, the Grace de, Grace de, that's a French eye. Now, you can change this. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this to... The Stormer. This will be our first convoy. And uh, the Stormer is going to be assigned to this route. Cool. So it's now on the Santiago Point Royal, Port Royal route. But I'm going to change the name of this as well because this is going to be our domestic route. This is going to all of our own towns. We're not going to any foreign towns. Now that means that when, we, when there are wars with foreign nations, you might want to adjust where your ships are trading, what trading routes they're on. Um, so... I'm going to call this the domestic route. Boom, there we go. Awesome. Now, you know what? There is. I left out Puerto Padre, but I just wanted to check 
what Puerto Padre is producing and if they're producing anything that Port Royal might want. And no, they're not producing any of the three that we want to sell at Port Royal. So it, it's kind of okay to leave that one out, I think. Good. All right, so now all we have to do is take it off pause and there goes the Stormer. Now, it will already have picked up some cargo. It will have picked up what it thinks it can uh, pick up at a, a decent price. Then it will go down to Port Royal. Go into Port. I'm actually going to increase the game speed. Now, it sold all of those products at Port Royal. Made a little profit, which is very nice. And then it will load up with goods. Oh, almost full. We've bought all that cotton. And off it goes on its way. Now, the Viceroy is telling us he's got a task for us. I was just thinking about you. I was just thinking about you too. He gives you some information. He tells you what the current state is uh, between the nations. And currently, everybody's neutral. Uh, well, actually, we're neutral. Uh, as well as Spain, England and France are currently allied. Uh, from what I've heard, you could increase your cargo capacity further. So... Yes, that's what we're planning to do. Currently, the economy of uh, our colonies is near and dear to me. In our towns, the commodity ropes has been in short supply for a long time, while France has enough in stock. I therefore ask you to buy 148 of that commodity by March the 4th, it's January the 5th at the moment, and deliver it to our towns. Right, now these, these tasks are, um, I, I guess, recommendations. You don't have to do them if you don't want to, right? And at the moment, I don't want to because I want to focus on accruing uh, my rewards through the delivery of cargo to Port Royal and generally just make money. Later on, we'll start doing tasks, but for now, off you go, Stormer, get on with it. Now, we have 84,000, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let the Stormer get up there a little bit, then I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to go to the shipyard over at Port Royal. Now, every other port, this... Um, this bar here tells you how big the, the, the town is. Every other town will be one, maybe two bars. Okay, so Santiago, it, it's it's basically thousands, kind of, sort of. So this is um, 1,600 people, so 1,600. Over here, this is two bars, so I'm expecting this is going to be 2,000 plus. Yeah, two and a half thousand. The only town big enough to have um, a shipyard at the start is Port Royal. Because in order to upgrade your repair dock, it tells you down here what this building is. This is the repair dock where you can repair your ships. But to upgrade it to a shipyard, you have to have 6,000 population. Oh yeah, you have to grow. Now, over here, we've got a large shipyard. Even though Port Royal is, is only 4,400. 4, um, but because it's the Viceroy City, it's got a shipyard. So if we come down to here, we can buy and sell ships. We can also order ships, but then we have to wait for them to be constructed. Uh, and we don't want to do that right now. We just want to buy a ship that we can use. So there are all kinds of different ships and they have all kinds of different um, statistics. So the schooner is kind of the, the, the smallest ship. Uh, it's slow, it's only just um, 10 knots. They've got three of those in stock. Then we've got the sloop. Sloop's a bit faster, 11. Both got the same cargo, 200. Then you've got the brig, 250. Again, 11 knots. Also, the maneuverability, that really only comes into um, comes into play when they're in combat. Same as things like how many cannons they've got and how many crew they've got. So we've got brigs. Then the barks. These, um, these are the fastest of the small ships. 12 knots, racing along at 12 knots. And then we've got the flute, which is, um, this is unique to the uh, to the Dutch. Um, it's slow, but it's got a huge capacity of 500. And that's all that's in stock at the moment. Now, I think I want the extra speed of the sloop. Uh, I can't afford any of the other ones, so we're going to go with the sloop. I'll purchase that. Now, where is it? Well, it's in the harbour, but we can't assign it until we make it into a convoy. So we go to the lighthouse. These are the vessels that we've got. We're going to form a new convoy. You can also add it to an existing convoy if it's in harbour. We're going to add this, and I'm going to change the name of this. Well, actually, no, let's, well, 
Yeah, I'm going to change the name of that. Um, I'm going to change this to Cloud. Because it's part of the sky. See what I'm doing here. So, um, Cloud. This now becomes a free convoy. Now, before we had one, then we assigned it to a trade route, so it wasn't free anymore, so we had zero. And then now, we've got one free. So, we are going to assign this to a trade route. This brings up our possible trade routes. We're going to assign it to the domestic route. Boom, there you go. And that is as simple as that. So now, the ship is going to go up here to Santiago and start the trade route. And I want it going this way because I want to be producing things in Santiago and shipping them out to Port Royal. But more of that later. For now, it's all about making money with our trading and getting some fame points. Now, let's have a look. Yes, yes. Um, we are starting to accrue fame. Oh, yes, we are. Now, we get uh, when we get to 50 fame, we will get a fame point. And um, that gets incrementally more as you as you go on. And the reason that we've got that fame is by delivering 152 tobacco here. Awesome source. Now you do get these little uh, historical things popping up from time time to time. I'll probably read um, kind of parts of them. During the Hampton Court Conference between King James I of England, representatives of the Church of England, and leading figures of the Puritans, the creation of the King James Bible is commissioned. Very nice. All right, cool. So, now, you can sail your ships manually, port to port, if you want, and do all the trading yourself. But you can also automate everything. So you've got complete control of um, like how micromanagey you want the game to be. Now, once, once we get some money going, once we start producing some cash, then we can start working on our town, and we can start building here. And... We can add things like churches. And, oh, well, let's, let's see. Uh, over here. This is the chapel. This will improve how uh, big or how many people a residential area can accommodate. This is the tavern. Um, the tavern also has that impact. So over here, this residential area is covered by the chapel and the tavern and so it gets both bonuses so this um, this area can hold up to a hundred sorry 240 citizens this area over here is covered also by the marketplace so it can hold um, it, it starts off at I think it's 80 I'm trying to find one that doesn't have the bonus here but they've all got the bonus there let's, uh, let's pick another town maybe Barracoa let's have a look uh, have we got any residential areas that don't have good coverage? Now, most of them start off with pretty good coverage, to be honest. They leave it to us to uh, to, to mess it all up later. Uh, no, no, they've all got pretty good coverage. Anyway, I think um, when you put in a res... In fact, if I go to the, product, the construction menu, it'll tell me. So a residential area... Uh, it can hold up to 240 citizens if there is a tavern and a chapel in close proximity. The, I think the tavern um, increases it from like 80 to 120, and then the chapel increases it from 120 to 240. Let's see. Oh, here you go. Oh, sorry. It goes from 80 to 140, and then the chapel goes from 140 to 240. And there are all kinds of buildings that will allow us to improve the satisfaction of our residents, how many residents we can have, and then businesses, oh, and also give bonuses to our businesses as well. So for example, the tool maker will increase the production of nearby uh, mines. And then you've got the businesses, and we will be setting up businesses in our town. Now, at the moment, the only town that, we administ that we're the administrator of is Santiago. But you can be, become the administrator of other towns as well. Oh, yeah. Now, and it's kind of a two-tier thing. First of all, you have to buy a license to allow you. So you have to get um, building permission. And, it, and you do that by increasing your fame. So you have to trade with them a lot. And then you'll be allowed to, build a, uh, to, to buy a building permission. 
then you can uh, build businesses. And when you've got enough businesses there, then eventually they'll allow you to take over the town and control the town buildings as well. Oh, there's a lot to it. And, and it's kind of awesome. All right, how are we doing? Well, how do I know how well I'm doing? That's a very good question. We're, we're running around and trading. Like, are we making money? Are we not making money? It seems like we're kind of not making that much at the moment. So, oh, I don't know. Maybe we are. 50,000. But where can I find out the details on this stuff? Well, if we go up to here to the convoy and town list, we can see our convoys. If we go to this tab, we can actually see how they're doing on their tours of the, uh, of the trade routes. So, we've only got one trade route at the moment, the domestic trade route. And on this route, currently, we are losing money. Oh yeah, we are losing a thousand gold a day. Well, that's not good. Now this particular convoy is, uh, is losing 314 gold per day. If we go to the Stormer, the Stormer is losing 773 per day. But they're both on the same route, so we add that up and they're losing a thousand gold a day. But you can see that at, a few seconds ago, our money was like 60,000. We're now up to like 70,000. So actually, we are making money on this go around because this is showing us what happened the last go around. So, uh, and then this is kind of the, uh, the ongoing. So this is the last, uh, oh no, this is the, no, this is the info on the last tour. Yeah, so we're up to 70,000, 76,000. Now, where's, uh, where's our ship? I'm just wondering whether it's coming around. Oh, did you see that star over there? That was, um, that was a task. The, the, here's, here's one. Let me pause the game. So these towns, they will, um, as well as everything else, offer you tasks. If I, um, uh, if I zoom in onto the, onto the star, it'll show you. They are saying, uh, we would like you to deliver 49, 49 corn and 65 vegetables. Uh, now, you will get a time limit on this, so you have to be careful about accepting these. But if you, uh, if you complete those tasks, you will get rewards. For example, you can get um, things like combat tactics or like all kinds of things. Right, let's leave it running because I want these ships to uh, make a couple of cycles so that we can actually see. Well, but we can see that the money's rolling in. And when this completes its cycle, and gets back to Santiago, we'll see that reflected in the uh, in the statistics in here. So we're losing a thousand a day at the moment, or we were before the start of the uh, this cycle. But I think this is going to be a lot more profitable. So the Stormer gets back to Santiago, and then now what's the story? So have a look, ho ho! Now we are making eight hundred and thirty-four, and I'm pretty sure that that's so. The storm is making uh, eleven, or has made on this tour eleven hundred a day. Now, when uh, when the cloud gets round as well, in fact, here comes the cloud into Barakoa. Now it has to unload, uh, reload, and it also has to repair if necessary, which takes time. And then it's going to disappear off to. Santiago, which will complete the loop. And when it does that, then we can see, oh ho ho! So the cloud's making 700 a day. So now on this route, we're making almost 2,000 a day. Now that is good money. And of course, over in Port Royal, we are delivering goods. Now let's just have a look. So the cloud currently has on board 56 tobacco, 45 coffee, 32 cocoa. And of course, Port Royal wants these things. Now, if we look at our current fame, right, when, uh, when, we, when we deliver, let's set it running. Oh, you can see how our fame jumps up. So this is how we get the fame going. We're almost up to a fame point. Money is coming in. So I'm gonna buy another ship at Port Royal. Uh, if I go to the shipyard, that is. So I go to the shipyard buy uh we will buy another sloop have they got anything better brigs uh, i'm gonna get a sloop i think so we'll buy another sloop go to the lighthouse put it into the eliza 
Um, so I've got the cloud, I've got the storm. This can be um, the blue skies. There we go, lovely. Okay, so the blue skies, you are going to be assigned to the domestic route. Assign that route. And off it goes. And of course it's going to sail up to Santiago first. Load up with commodities. Oh, look at this. 85 tobacco, which of course is going to bring us in. Sit down. More fame. Oh, we're almost up to... Uh, we're almost up to a, a fame point. Our first fame point. Now, what can we do with our fame points? Well, we can, we can spend them on all kinds of things. We can get captains. We can get um, concessions to allow us to start different types of businesses like breweries and rope yards and distilleries and forges and carpenters shops and all kinds of things. Um, but we can also get some other cool things. Um, so we can get discounts on our trading vessels for, uh, for constructing them. We can get uh, bonuses to our living accommodations. So our, our towns will house more people. We can also enable the constructions of um, special vessels. Now these are the ones unique to our nation. So we get the trading flute and the carrack and then this is the one we want the large shipyard so that we can build ships and order ships in our hometown as well which would be awesome all right so i'm just really waiting to get our first fame point where the money is starting to roll in quite nicely our ships are going around we've got a task over here let's have a look oh now this now this is not a town task this is um this is something that you will see that'll pop up like pretty much anywhere on the coast from time to time. Can even happen in the middle of the ocean. And this one is saying, an old man is watching all the vessels which come into port here. I'm looking for my daughter. She got on board in Georgetown, but she never arrived here. The captain told us that she would have disappeared at some point on the way, right? So you can accept this task. And you'll have to do something, which is um, probably find his daughter, I would imagine. But there are all kinds of um, tasks. They, they can sell you, um, for example, treasure maps. And the way treasure maps work, we go to the journal. They'll sell you a piece, one piece of a treasure map. Once you find the central section, then you can go off and it will lead you to, uh, to a valuable statue. And that gains you tremendous fame. And there's loads of them to, uh, to find. And for each one that you find, you get fame. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they also do other things. They'll, they'll, they, they could do, you name it. Uh, you can, you can they'll, they'll help train your captains. You might find cargo floating in the middle of the ocean. Just flotsam floating along. And you can just sail up and pick it up. So you've got to be on the lookout for these. Uh, some of them can be, um, can be useful tasks. Like, now we've got a, sh a ship, the Cloud, or Convoy. The cloud appro approaching Andros, and what's uh, Andros's task? They are saying they want a delivery of 50 coal. Now, let me see. Do, I don't suppose we've got 50 coal on board. No, we've got 11. What we need is somewhere close that produces coal. Um, none of those produce. What about uh, now? We've discovered a couple, a couple of foreign towns. These are French. Frolic keys and mosquito and in the next episode we're going to be sailing around doing some exploration which um, which will require us to do some manual sailing oh yeah it could get us into lots of trouble but we'll see we need somewhere that produces coal uh, and Havana is the closest place so this is what we're going to do we're going to let the cloud sail down here and get into Andros Right, then, I'm going to go into Andros. We're going to, uh, oh, you know what? We've got 62. I think I've got it before. Yeah, I've, got, I've managed to catch it before it sold any. Uh, we're going to accept. Now, you have to accept this with a particular convoy. It's got to be a particular convoy that fulfills the task. So we're going to accept the task. Right, we've got to deliver 50 coal by April the 19th. So we've got about a month to do this. Oh, look. There's the task down there. Okay, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sell off and make some room. So I'm going to manually trade here because I want the Andros to no longer 
be on its route. So I'm going to disable its route for now and we're going to sail around manually. Uh, we are going to sell the 11 coal that we have. And what else have we got that we can sell here? Ooh, I tell you what, we should get um, we should get a, a good profit on our cloth. Yeah, and as you move this up and down, the price will change. If um, like if you flood the market, then the price will start to drop. But we're we're only selling ten, so that's fine. What else can we sell? Uh, oh, now some coffee. I could ditch some coffee, but we kind of want that really to uh, to deliver to Port Royal. So let's see what else we've got. Uh, we can maybe sell some pastries. You can see the price starts to drop if I try to sell too many. So let's just sell a few of those. We might be able to sell. Oh, we can sell our, our ceramics. And then we want to keep our cocoa. We can sell metal goods or metalware. Uh, I need a bit more room. What else can we sell? Can I ditch some sugar? You know what? I'm going to actually just ditch this. I'm not going to make... I'll make a tiny profit, but not much of a profit. And I'm going to sell the beer as well. Oh, now the beer. The beer I can sell and still maintain a decent profit, so that's good. Uh, I've got enough room now for the coal. So, we are going to sail to Havana and buy coal. At least, that's the idea. So, this is a, this is a countdown on the, on the days. Okay. Okay, we're now in Havana. Let's go into Havana. And we want to buy coal. Now, I am going to buy... Now, we need 65, don't we? So, I'm going to buy the 65 that we need. And then I'll see if they've got anything else that we can maybe pick up to make a bit of a profit. And the answer is kind of not really. Maybe a little bit of uh, meat. Yeah, we'll fill it with meat. And then we're going to sail back to Andros. And now, if I press the Alt key, I can see the wind conditions. We're sailing against the wind, which is not ideal, but it's uh, it swings some roundabouts. Right, now we're at Andros. Oh, actually, I only needed 50. I thought I needed 65, and we'd already delivered uh, 11. But it's fine. As long as we give them enough to satisfy the contract, it'll all be good. So we will now sell off as much of this as I can and still make a decent profit. So, and... I have received a tactic. Now this is a ship's tactic and it's called repair. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, but now that we're here, um, is there anything particular that I want to do manually? Yeah, we can sell this couple of bits of rope. Oh, I can sell that meat. Get a very good price for that. And we can sell the corn. And that's probably about it. Okay, cool. Right, now that we've completed that task, I'm going to reactivate the route and let the cloud continue on its merry way. Which, once it's loaded up with... Uh, oh, it's repairing at the moment. Once it's finished repairing, it'll load up with cargo and then it'll get the hell out of there. Okay, it's now loaded up. Oh no, that's the blue skies. Yeah, sorry, the cloud. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong, uh, the wrong convoy. The cloud is now headed off on its merry way. Hooray, and there was much rejoicing. Okay, having done that, um, what else did I want? Oh yeah, I wanted to show you the tactics. So, uh, this this is all about um, the, the ship combat, and we'll get into that in, a, in, a, in another episode. But I'll just show you briefly. If we, um, if we look at our journal and go to tactics, there are different types of tactics there are tactics that you get from classes of vessel which might be things like um, uh, outmaneuvered this tactic allows you to move any enemy vessel on a neighboring field by one field so you can actually move an enemy vessel this one um, this one gives you burning arrows the current vessel sets the sails of a neighboring vessel ablaze and thus will detain it till the end of the next round you can also get tactics from captains and that's what we've been given. We've been given a captain's tactic of repair. Uh, using this, and there's a cooldown. So you can use it, and then there'll be a number of turns cooldown, and then you can maybe use it again. 
Um, this one is repair, which lets us um, uh, repair a, a vessel for 25% of its hit, hit points. Oh, man. I think, guys, that that's probably enough for this first episode. Don't you think? So I'm going to leave you with a little look at Santiago uh, and remind you that if you're interested in the game, you're thinking about picking it up, check out the link in the video description. It'll take you to the, uh, to the Calypso store. It's not on my store. This is on the Calypso store. And uh, you can get 20% off with the code. Sky is the limit. So, guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, hit the, hit the like button. Let me know. Or leave me a comment and tell me. Um, there's going to be episode two and three coming out today. So, um, so, yeah, make sure you check back if you're enjoying it. Because there'll be more episodes coming your way. And I will catch you for the next one. Thank you for watching, guys. Peace out.